All right, so I know that we talked about releases last week and, and everything like that, but I got a new one now, which is the new Goosebumps series that's going to be starting. I'm very excited about it. I loved Goosebumps when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and it doesn't look as bad as the Goosebumps series from the 90s. So As bad? Like, um, as, like, this quality, you mean? Yeah. Or do you, okay, I wasn't sure if you meant, like, as scary or, or like, no, I don't know. No, it was bad quality in the 90s because okay. of bad CGI and whatnot and yeah. bad acting. The Goosebumps thing uh, missed me because, like, I think the first book was published in 95. Earlier than earlier than that? I don't know. I don't remember. I think so. I think it was 95. Um, and Or maybe the series came out in 95. Um, but, yeah, I just don't remember. I don't think they were a thing when I was younger. I think they came after my... My youth. Yeah, one of my uh, my favorite ones, which is going to be a big plot point for this Goosebumps, was the Say Cheese and Die book, which is like you take a picture of someone and then it basically prophesizes their death. Oh, um, that's nice. Yeah, it's a great kids book. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the way it's written, it, it's not as bad as right. it sounds. But, right. Uh, and of course, it's coming out on October thirteenth, October Friday the thirteenth. So it's like the perfect release date for a Goosebumps that series. Is, that is a perfect release date. But it also reminded me of like just the fact that it was banned, yeah, or like the fact that it had satanic themes in it, and it was about Satan. And and I'm like, why? Yeah, I was uh, I was just reading this morning that it. Uh, for a while, it was number 15 on the top 100 most frequently challenged books of the 90s. I, I just don't... What was it about the 90s and everything having satanic themes and everything should be banned for having satanic theme, themes you know, like d and I feel like more that was actually more of an 80s thing. Really? Yeah. Maybe it just kept carrying... Actually, I just think it just keeps carrying on. Like... The idea of th- certain things being satanic is like always there, but I feel like the satanic panic thing was like an '80s. I mean, you saw that in Stranger Things, right? Oh, that's like, true. Yeah, they they were they even had, with D and D. Yeah, yeah, they had their D and D group, and then they were like, "Oh, it's all I satanic." I because and, you know. kids role playing demonic characters means that they're going to become de- demonic people. But that, not the, but the, they're not even all demonic characters. I mean, you even have. Like, I don't understand that because when you have people role playing like the super nice guy or something like that, oh no, they're not going to turn into the super nice guy, but because they're role playing the, the evil dude, they're going to become evil. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a big, it's a, yeah, it's, that's a, a big fear The the whole like Satan is just crouching at the door waiting, you know, is. Yeah. I think it moved from uh, D and D to video games now. Oh but it's always been it's around always for books. Been there. Yeah. Oh, well, for yeah, for book and movies. And movies, yeah. Uh so there's um different things that have always been um you know, people parents concerned about their kids doing XYZ because it's uh satanic. So like anything that had to do with witchcraft, you know, was like this is this Don't is watch evil WandaVision. and right, actually there's probably Oh man, what there was I totally just remembered when the second Hocus Pocus movie came out this uh, past yeah. fall. There were those women who were like, they're gonna like I don't know, entrance you through the screen or something. Yeah, I don't I know. It that. was very, very strange. And and I remember when the Harry Potter books came out, um, there was a lot of like, you know, people didn't want their kids reading it because it was about witchcraft and wizardry. Like it was you know, a, a dun, cult. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I literally watched Harry Potter last night. Oh, that's right. You watched Order of the Phoenix? Yep. Is that the one? I think that's actually one of my favorite ones. Same here. Of the eight movies. That one and um, for me, The Prisoner of Azkaban is a... I don't like Prisoner of Azkaban oh, that much. God. Why? But you like, you know what, I, I don't accept your opinion because you like Goblet of Fire, and that is by far the worst. No, it's not the worst. It is the worst. Chamber of Secrets is very boring. Yeah, okay. I, Chamber of Secrets is the second worst. But <laughs> but Goblet of Fire is the worst Harry Potter movie. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I'm 
Sorry. It is terrible. I hated it. Okay. Anyway. Anyways. <laughs> People in the comments. Oh, it's the best one. You're dumb. Uh, yeah. So anyway, sorry. Goosebumps. Banned books. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just, I feel like so much about banned books, it's, I mean, it's all, it's obviously all geared towards kids and school and stuff like that. And I really mm -hmm. don't understand that because all of it is for educational purposes. And yet you're literally taking away a huge part of people's education by banning books mm -hmm. because then kids don't have an opportunity to critically think about what is going on inside of the books. They just feel like since it has negative themes or even just themes that are deemed as more grown up, which has definitely become less taboo. Like yeah. sexual, like sexual stuff has become r a lot less taboo over the past just decade alone. Like so many more things have had uh, sexual activity in it. So it sounds like I'm saying paranormal activity. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever trips your trigger, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of people are teaching their kids about sex a lot earlier earlier on and teaching their kids about like being queer and everything like that too. But then schools are on the opposite side of that where they're like banning any books that has anything to do with sexual activity or being, yes. even being queer. And they deem that as like sexually explicit, which is yeah. crazy because some stuff just mentions queer stuff, but somehow that fall that falls under the sexually explicit category. Yeah, that is one of those things that just really frustrates the hell out of me because there's a whole section of people who just categorize anything LGBTQ plus as sexual. Like Yeah. And it's it's so fascinating to me because <laughs> they don't do the same thing with heterosexual. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not inherently sexual because, and, and, the, and you know, there's people who just uh, automatically think like any gay person is, is a pedophile. It, it's just yeah. absurd thinking. And it, and I think that's what leads to. Yeah. Lot. Somehow being gay means towards boys and not towards other men. Like, I, I don't, know. I don't it understand is, how that it is so dumb. It is, it is so dumb and it's harmful. And, um, you know, an example of this, uh, speaking of banned books is I think the name of the books was everywhere babies. I think, uh, I think okay. It, I think it was about babies. Sounds I don't know. terrifying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's Night babies of the living babies everywhere. <laughs> I mean, that can be terrifying, yeah. Um, but uh, there's, it got banned in one school district for quote-unquote pornographic material. And the author was like, there's nothing pornographic in here. And the only thing I can think of that made them want to ban this book and claim it that way was because there's one illustration where a man has his arm around another man. That's crazy. I know. And that's the kind of crap that people, they're like, oh, it's pornographic because it shows two of the people of the same gender in a relationship. Not even like barely cuddling. Yeah. And it's not even, or even just holding hands or like, you know, and it's yeah. not even like it's like in, they're in, in bed or they're showing them in any kind of sexual position. It's just that they exist. Yeah. And that's the... That's the frustrating it's, and scary part of this. Um, Shelby also had me watch the book thief not long ago, oh, which yeah, is you pretty said good. That. Yeah. Um, and like it was interesting because they had Nazis literally had like this whole speech about it and basically said that Germany was going to be anti intellectual, and people just like cheered. Yeah, I know. And it's like, because the, they they burned any books that were considered un-German. Yes. And although we're not burning them, we are banning any books that are, we that our government considers un-American, probably. Right. Well, it's not so much. Well, I mean, it is the governments of certain is, states, but it's a lot of it is parents. Well, yes. You know? And a lot of this started, oh, man, I can't remember this guy's name. And I did not write it down. 
there's this one guy um, who decided that uh, critical race theory was a thing that he was going to try to make into a big controversy to rile up people um, against schools. Because he was basically like, we need to... It, we need to have our indoctrination in schools instead of, you know, education. Um, and so it was like this one guy was like, I'm going to rile people up about this and then spread the ideas everywhere. And then all of a sudden everybody, everywhere was like, Oh yeah. What about critical race theory? What about all these books? And like, and if it seemed like some kind of grassroots movement, but, it was really this guy going, I need, we need this for political expediency to, to retain, uh, a certain party's power. Yeah. Seems to be how a lot of motivations are in America. <sighs> yes. <laughs> it all comes down to power. Oh man, I, I don't think, remember the guy's like, name. I also don't understand because I feel like people should be able to see the pattern by now, especially adults. Like, I don't understand how adults don't see the pattern of, if you keep, especially children, away from something and then you introduce it to them later, especially if a bad influence introduces it to them later, then all of a sudden that kid is going to cling on to it. Mm -hmm. And so like the simplest thing, you and I were talking about it this morning. We are just talking about how like, you know, keeping sweets away from your kid isn't a good idea because as soon as they get a hold of a sweet, then all of a sudden they're going to have the most right. massive sugar tooth yeah. or yeah. sweet tooth ever. Yeah. And by not teaching kids like uh, stuff about uh, sexual activity or uh, queerness or critical race theory stuff, mm -hmm. anything like that, then they're not going to have any way to be able to think about it or deal with it when it comes to and then when someone comes across which is most likely their parents and tells them that stuff like that is wrong mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they're just going to say oh yeah that is wrong yeah instead of them actually reading it and experience it for themselves which is partially probably why parents want to ban some of these things is that way they don't have to or it's that way they could they could have their own influences on their kids about how this stuff is meant to be thought about. Yeah. And usually that's negative. Yeah. Yeah. It's or, yeah. Control. It's, it's control. So um, I found the guy's name. His name is Christopher Rufo. And um, he, he decided um, that critical race theory is bad and it pervades every institution in the federal government. And uh, he purposefully decided um, to oppose critical race theory and intentionally use the term to conflate various race related ideas in order to create a negative association. He literally said his, his strategy was to intentionally misuse it. Jeez. And then he said, well, eventually we will eventually turn critical race theory toxic as we put all of the various culture and ins cultural insanities under that brand category. The goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. Yeah, and then by banning books, no kid reads books that are about critical race theory and then don't challenge the papers or whatever it, it is that are coming out about it. Mm -hmm. They don't challenge it at all. They just read it and accept it. Well, and the thing is, is that he was successful in conflating everything into critical race theory, anything about he race was... into critical race theory. There are some books that are uh, banned in certain school districts, like just because they have people of color as a main character. He's literally the critical race version of the vaccines cause autism, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and this is the thing that, that, that frustrates me is, you know, he, he decided this was his goal and he's been successful. And, but the people who agree with him and follow him, you know, you probably tell them like, Oh, he purposefully did this. They'd be like, I don't care. He's right. You know, or whatever, even though he said 
like he, it, the way that he worded it indicated that he knows it's untrue. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. And so, um, there's, uh, like one of the banned books in one of the school districts is just about black women in STEM. Oh, that's, you know, Oh, you mean like, like working in it? Yes. Okay. I thought you meant like all the horrible things they've done to black women in, in STEM because that, well, you know what, that book might include some of that stuff, but I think, I think what it was, was that it was just celebrating black yeah. women in STEM. Like, oh, here's this person and yeah, they no, did I, this. I thought it know? was about all the, uh, the unlawful experiments that were. Oh, well they're, oh God. Yeah. 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 And it, it's just there, what is happening is using book banning as a vehicle they're successfully keeping people from learning about things that might make them question the status quo like especially white people who grow up in white areas and go to white schools yeah and, you know and this idea that i mean some of the laws are written i I meant to look up the more recent thing. I was watching a video that was from like a year ago, and I think it said there were like 17 states that have laws about um, not being able to teach race in a certain way in schools. And I think they said yeah. there were like 15 more that were introduced, so there's probably more states now that have them on the books. But the idea is that you can't um, – I think Florida was – like their law was the blueprint for this, right? And the idea was like you it can't – It always starts with Florida. I, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you t- <laughs> sorry another florida man story coming up oh gosh um but the idea is um the uh oh my god i'm so distracted because i have so many jokes about florida coming up in my head and i'm trying to be nice <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so the idea is that you can't um teach anything about race that would make people uncomfortable which I find fascinating because the audience for that is, oh, something that would make white people uncomfortable. Yes. You don't want yeah. to teach that. But I'm like, okay, how many people of color have been made to feel uncomfortable about the ways things have been taught in the over the, like decades? Are you can we probably just uncomfortable in general? Just well pff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then also like, oh, discomfort. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you uncomfortable? You know, like but you still have the advantage of uh, economic privilege in a lot of cases. And, and these are the same people that will call other people snowflakes. Oh, I know. That's the funny. That's the funniest part to me. But the thing is, like, I'm like, okay, so there is, are all kinds of studies that show that black people have more difficulty getting jobs, just like people looking at resumes and they're like, oh, that name is black. We're going to yep. eliminate them. Um, they have. T- more poorer health outcomes. They have poor, poorer economic outcomes. There's been redlining that has, you know what I mean? Like there's all these things that have been done to oppress black people. Oh, but I'm sorry, whitey, that you feel uncomfortable. Whitey. You know, it's just, and you know what I thought was really funny? I don't remember who said this. I wish I did. Cause I, f- I would attribute them. But um, they were talking about this, like, oh, you can't teach things that make make kids feel uncomfortable. And so that came comes down to slavery, right? So now there's all kinds of things about what you can and cannot teach about slavery or whether you would teach about slavery at all. Oh, my gosh. I do not understand I know. the history classes of public schools at all. I, I, I know. How, how do we take... Like it's if it's a white guy that's done terrible things but has like one accomplishment, <laughs> then all of a sudden they're a hero. Uh huh. Christopher Columbus. He didn't even do anything good. He didn't even discover America. He um he actually was way off course for where he wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, he was a terrible sailor. <laughs> he, was, he raped and pillaged. He wasn't yeah. even the first one to discover America. Yeah. Thanksgiving is probably the most messed up holiday. Yes. Yes, I know. I know. It's all these things. But How do we turn a white guy into that I know, level? Because he's white. That's um, but what this person was saying was that, okay, so if there, a kid is in a classroom and they're learning about slavery, right? And you say, oh, it's making them uncomfortable. You have to ask the question, why is that kid identifying with the slave owner 
instead of the abolitionist? Mm. And I'm just like, that's a great question. And also like, there are people of all kinds of race, gender, uh, abilities, you know, orientation, like whatever. There, there's all different kinds of people who have done atrocious things throughout history. Does every person that matches that same thing, like, are they supposed to feel guilty? Because, you know what I mean? We'll like, just live in a 1984 society and just not, or was it 84? 19? Well, that was the name of the book. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where we just don't know anything about our history and we just live our lives as right. mindless drones. It's just, it's just so dumb. Cause I think, I, I think I don't look back and if a white woman did something terrible, I don't take that on myself. Yeah. I learn from it and I go, oh, I don't want to do something like that. And if there's something, if there's something. And you just do that with yeah. anyone in history in general. Yeah. You're just, yeah. okay. Like, or if there's something specific about like, oh, white women and this, I, I go, okay, that is, that is good information for me to have. And I might interrogate myself a little bit, but I'm not like, I don't know. Hey, that's called critical thinking. <gasps> what? I know, right? That's the next thing about to be banned. Um, what's great? Yeah, that's what's crazy to me about stuff like uh, mouse being banned. That is one of the like most mind-boggling book bannings to me. Like Nazi Germany literally had book burnings. They literally indoctrinated youth. They literally Which had the they goal all of changing in school. The book, I think. Yeah, like. Mouse is one of those books that like change my view on World War II. Not change my view. Like obviously, I was against Nazis the whole time. But <laughs> <laughs> I liked Nazis until I read this book. Yes. Wait, wait, um, quickly um, for anybody who hasn't read it, just quickly describe. So, Mouse is a graphic novel where everyone is. I think. I think what it is is like. Uh, uh, Jewish people are all mouse or all mice, and then um, I think Nazis are all cats. Yes, um, and then I think is it Polish are all. Oh man, were they dogs or were they? I don't remember. But yeah. anyway, there's just a lot of symbolism in how it's drawn out, mm -hmm. and uh, it's entirely about. It's entirely following this world, this uh, family specifically, this person named Art that survived the Holocaust. His father survived the Holocaust. His father su yeah. survived the Holocaust. And um, yeah, I, I haven't read it in a while, so I can't give huge amounts of detail, but it was... It well, was he's basically interviewing his father about the Holocaust. So yeah. the graphic novel is partially about Art's life and his relationship with his father and partially about Nazi yeah. Germany. And... It's a, it's a pretty intense book. It really I, is. I mean, yeah. like, there's definitely moments where you're like, oh, oh gosh. But the thing I don't understand is like how those extreme ideas, not extreme ideas in, in the bad sense, just extreme ideas and like they're very strong, uh, like can take you off your feet mm. type things. Mm. How we're, how that is banned and yet they were felt so strongly about teaching us about 9-11 and anti-terrorism that we had to watch documentaries in school where we watch people jump off of buildings. Yeah. Like, how does that translate? How do we, how, how do we go from watching 9-11 stuff where we were, we're watching people burning alive and we're watching people jump from mm. the top of the Twin Towers but we're going to ban Mouse that is a graphic novel about, like, mice and cats in Germany that, honestly, even though it has a lot of, it talks about a lot of messed up stuff that happens in Nazi Germany, I'm sure it dumps it down quite a bit, too, with how extreme it was. But then you also shared that thing with me about 19 minutes being banned. Oh, Yeah. That's right. I did share. That's, yeah, I meant and to how... remember that, so I'm glad you did. So for anybody who's not aware, 19 Minutes is a novel written by Jody Pico who uh, uh, it's about a school shooting. Yeah. And so, of course, there were people who wanted it banned because it was about a school shooting. 
Uh, but then uh, I was reading a, a story from Jody Pico uh, where she was saying that different students were uh, standing up about uh, about this being banned and saying, I felt invisible until I read this book and it saved me. I was going to bring my gun to yes. school until I read this book. There was an, there was one, yeah, there was one person who said I was basically going to shoot up my school and then I read this book and then there was another where they were going to commit su- suicide and then they read this book and they didn't. And so I think that demonstrates the power of reading things that make us uncomfortable. Yeah. Because we have thoughts and feelings that are uncomfortable. And some of these books teach students how to deal with that, teach kids and and teenagers. And actually that was one of the things with the Goosebumps series. Um, You know, people said it was too scary where, but other people argued um, that, it was, they actually are really good at helping children manage their fear, Mm. which I thought was really interesting. As I said, if you don't teach kids stuff right away, then Mm -hmm. when it comes up in the future, it's going to be a challenge or people can twist their views and ideas on it. Like, yeah, I, I can't understand safeguarding kids so much to the point where it's like the kids just don't, at that point, kids just don't experience anything. It's like yeah. the it's like the parents that don't ever let their kids go outdoors because they don't want them getting sick, which then means when the kid becomes an adult, they go outside and they immediately just get sick all right, the time. Right, so it's the idea of building up immunity and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is an argument for I think um against antibiotics is I think like we're we've now formed superbugs because we keep yeah. Giving drugs to combat the thing and then the they evolve to you know to combat the drug. To, yeah, to combat the drug. And so I mean there's consequences to everything, right? Yeah. And there's I I man, some of the book bannings are also just stupid. Yeah. Like Charlotte's Web. What? Yeah. Why? It was so this whole book Charlotte spoiler, Charlotte dies. Because Charlotte oh, no. dies. No, that? nope. <laughs> okay. Nope. It's uh, um, this entire book about dedicated, being dedicated to loved ones mm-hmm. and like being friendly to everyone, no mm-hmm. matter who they are mm-hmm. or what they are in this case. Mm-hmm. Banned because people didn't believe that uh, things other than humans should be able to speak. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's like so many, like, well, that's Disney. like every kid book ever. Yeah, like you, Disney do, screwed. Do you just not watch Bluey at all then? Like, oh do my you, God, Bluey is amazing. I think it's because a spider is talking. Okay. I don't know. I guess it's just because spiders are scary and spiders shouldn't be able to have an identity to make them not scary. That is so weird. I don't know. Uh, or like um, Captain Underpants. Oh, why is that banned? Because he's wearing Violence. underpants. Violence. How much violence is in Captain Underpants? It's like the punching a toilet. It's like, do you, oh. yeah, I don't. Interesting. Wow. It's People like, are sensitive. Like if you don't want your kid to read it, then just don't give it to your kid to read. Why do you have to ban it yeah. from the library for all other kids? I think stuff like that, like especially like a lot of kids TV shows running into this problem too, where a lot of parents don't want their kids watching stuff like the older Transformers cartoons or something because it involves violence when it's like really like it's like the the amount of people that have grown up in the past however many years watching like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the Transformers movies or the like Marvel superhero movies Mm -hmm. um I'm talking about the cartoons, not even just like the like the ones that are actually meant for adults. Right. Like, I what? Like that doesn't it doesn't affect the kid. It just it's just an entertaining thing to watch. Yeah, like, I think the the violence question has always been fascinating to me because one, I feel like uh, the rating systems for movies are so much quicker to rate something are if there's something sexual in it than if there's violence in it. Like it feels like you can have way more violence than sexuality, yeah. which has always been fascinating to me. Um, but two, like I don't, I don't have a problem with 
you know, there's all kinds of things where even just sword fights in a, in a kid's movie about a time when there would be sword fights, you know, like I think there's a certain amount of quote unquote violence that is, is acceptable. But I do think there are some concerns um, about too much violence for different ages. But I honestly, I don't know what that line is. And so I think a lot of that has to do with how you parent and how you discuss it with your child. You also, as a parent, should not just outright trust ratings. Well, there's that, yeah. Like ratings are so, they mean nothing at this point. Ratings don't mean anything besides R means that there's probably, it's either very gory or there's a, at the very least, a very minimal sex scene. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, and the thing is, there's some R rated movies that could be watched at a much younger age than some R rated movies that should probably never be watched until you're like 30. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) But, but now there's like, Stuff like Y one, Y two, Y three, Y four, Y five, Y like Wi Fi, Wi Fi. Yeah, <laughs> there's like there's like a different rating for like every age now. It's like you really? can't. Oh my gosh! You can't under you can't just assume that every seven year old has the same level of maturity. I mean that's true. You have to as a parent stuff. be yeah. yeah. You have to understand what is bad and what is good for your child. Mm-hmm. And so it's like if the kid is more scared by stuff like fighting, Mm -hmm. then don't show fighting. But if they like stuff like people being rescued, then Paw Patrol. Oh, like (laughs) I don't understand. There's there was literally someone who was upset with Paw Patrol because it showed people in danger. Hmm. I'd be more upset that it's indoctrinating kids to love the police state. Fair enough. (laughs) You know, I remember having some fights with you at different points along the way. Oh, for sure. Because you wanted wanted to to, watch. Yeah. I wanted to play Halo. Oh, yeah. You wanted to play Halo. I wasn't. I did not feel comfortable about first person shooter games with you. I I, not with you, meaning like you specifically, like I thought there was something wrong with you, but it just (laughs) there wasn't. I mean, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But. I was actually more concerned about uh, there was a time that there was a sleepover and it was with all your friends who were like older than you and they were going to watch paranormal activity. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I think you were 11. Something. And I was just like, no, no, he's not going to watch it. You got so mad at me. You were so mad. But I just felt like at you at that age, that was one of those things that could like creep into your brain and give you nightmares, you know? And uh, I mean, yeah, you kept me away from pretty much anything that was horror. Uh, yeah. I tried to keep you away from horror as long as I could, because I didn't want, I didn't want you having nightmares and I didn't want that kind of like uh, nightmares anyway. CP- <laughs> I well, And to be, you know, to, to be honest, um, the, my, my thoughts on that had a lot to do with how, how my own brain processes that stuff. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I hate horror movies except for Constantine. <laughs> if you can count Constantine as more of movie. a superhero movie than well, but and I also, I also really don't like spiritual horror movies. So it's really funny that Constantine is one of my favorite movies of all time because I usually can't handle movies that have, like demons and spirits and like anything kind of otherworldly. Yeah. Cause there's always in the back of my mind, the possibility that those things are real. <laughs> Whereas for some reason I'm like, well, it's not likely that an ax murderer is going to like pop into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, and so like that kind of stuff could, would really like kind of seep into my brain and, and maybe that's yeah. why I don't believe in any of that stuff is cause you never let me watch any of that stuff. So I, I like, <laughs> Okay. Don't believe it at all. Well, and I watched, I remember going to a party at a friend's house and watching Nightmare on Elm Street, um, which would probably be laughable now, but um, when I was pretty young and it messed me up. And so I think like, I was like, I don't want that to happen to Malcolm, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a really difficult decision that um, parents have to make. But I, 
But I didn't say to the parents who were hosting that sleepover, I didn't say, oh, and you shouldn't show it to your kids either. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's, I think that's what a lot of this comes down to with me with this banned books thing. Projecting. It's, it's projection. And also, um, the people who are really behind it have nefarious motives. That's true. And, and there's a major, I mean, you cannot, I know that man, we have loved to make Hitler comparisons for such a long time in ridiculous ways. Like people were like, Obama's just like Hitler. And I'm like, how? But, um, <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, uh, there, there is a parallel with all of this attack on education, attack on learning, attack on reading to the Hitler regime because they purposefully t- had, they had, they had the Hitler youth. They targeted young people cause they, with propaganda, cause they knew that's where you need to get them. And they targeted schools for, and to have them remove certain types of books and to incorporate Nazi propaganda. I, I say, I understand wanting to ban books that you deem are unsafe for kids to read. Mm-hmm. But that just became a slippery slope so quick. Yeah. I mean, because you should have known. Like, seriously, you should have known that as soon as you gave parents access to banned books, they were going to be banning everything. Well, because of. Yeah, because but that's everyone, part of their goal. Everyone just has the dumbest reasons to ban stuff. Like, I, I understand stuff like. The Great Gatsby or Catcher in the Rye, maybe, because like those have, first of all, they're kind of confusing books for one thing, <laughs> but they're also just like, um, there is a lot of explicit stuff in those books, but I don't remember. I, rem- I, Never read Catcher in the Rye, but I did read The Great Gatsby, and I thought it was the most boring book I ever read. Great Gatsby was very boring. <laughs> I I at least more so understand Catcher in the Rye because Catcher in the Rye has like a lot of prostitution and a lot oh, of really? a lot of sexual stuff in mm. it. And um, although interest- I'm sure that one of the biggest factors of it wasn't the prostitution or the sexual activity, it probably was the uh, trans person that oh that's, he spotted at one that's point. Probably what. Well, but here's the thing. I'm pretty sure like The Great Gatsby and Catcher in the Rye and other books like that were required reading for my parents. Like yeah. or or people in between their age and my age or whatever. Like Great Great Gatsby was required reading for me. I still don't understand the point behind it being I don't know either, but so. <laughs> um, there's there's so many classic books that I just hate and I and I always feel like terrible because people are like, "How do you not like you know, one of whatever. I think one of my favorite assigned readings, and I don't know if this is banned. I would assume it is. Is Frankenstein? Oh God, that's such a good book. Frankenstein is such a good book, and I think it teaches such an important lesson as well. Of like, just be like, you had Franken or you had a, a Frankenstein, and then you had Frankenstein's monster. Mm-hmm. Even though Frankenstein was the real monster, the whole book. Yeah. Well, and so I think that teaches such an important lesson that it's like Frankenstein's monster was just this terrified, like very, yeah, it yeah. was a very powerful being, it but was, like, I, I felt like, I felt like it was such a powerful book and I feel like the original movie just did it such a disservice because oh, for sure. I was only aware of the original black and white movie and then all the joke things that came after it, like, um, oh, what was there? There was, a uh, um. Oh man, I can't remember the name of it. I'm pretty sure it was a Mel Brooks movie and it had, but they kept saying Frankenstein and I don't know. It was, it was, it was funny, but, um, uh, and then of course like cartoony things. And then, um, you know, there was always like Frankenstein was always portrayed as this, uh, uh, uh like, you know, didn't yeah. speak. And then the, I, then I read the book. I didn't read the book until I was like, yeah, he's intellectual 30 and yeah. And it was like, Oh, and I thought, you know, <laughs> he's having these intelligent conversations and I'm like, what, what? And then also, yeah, like you, everybody calls the monster Frankenstein, like, yes, but it was Frankenstein was the doctor, doctor that made him. Um, I, I just did a really quick, quick look and, uh, it said that Frankenstein was banned in 1955 in South Africa for being obscene and containing indecent material. Indecent indecent probably the whole you know sewing together body parts thing nah <laughs> didn't anyone watch frankenweenie frankenweenie 
<laughs> Gosh. Yeah, that was, but that, I really, I, I really enjoyed that book a lot. Um, but anyway. Yeah, sorry. I, Franken, Frankenstein, I've, I love the book. I understand why people might find it boring or something, but that's one of the few books that I read in school where I felt like I, it actually had a purpose to it. Mm hmm like a lesson behind it. All the other books, I'm like, is this just like, do you just like this book? And so you just want to share it with the class or? Yeah, there was, that was for me, that was required reading for one of my grad school classes called the British Gothic. Circe was another good one. Circe is so good. Yeah. That was one of the few I liked. I'm just not a Victorian novel kind of person. Like I hate Pride I like Victorian architecture. I'm. Oh yeah. yeah I like Victorian architecture. Victorian. But stories are not interesting to me at all yeah like we read one called mysteries of udolfo and i was just like oh my gosh snore <laughs> <laughs> i apologize if my professor is listening <laughs> but i cannot oh gosh so many of the books were boring life of pi i could even kind of get a lesson behind it but that book was just weird that was just a drug trip in a book <laughs> That was like, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now we're just talking about books we like. Yes, now we are. Um, so anyway, pulling it, pulling it back to banned books and um, things like that. I, um, I have to say, like, I think there is a lot of this comes from some sort of religious fervor. Oh yeah. Of, you know, what is morally appropriate and things like that. But I mean, the ironic thing about that is, uh, somebody was like, okay, well then let's ban the Bible. Like, because there's oh, yeah, graphic for sure. stuff in the Bible. Uh, you and, don't want to read about someone getting nailed to a post. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also some like really sexual stuff in Song of Solomon. Yeah. If you had a kid's book where someone like magically became pregnant, Right, right. Oh my God! Can you imagine so taking some of the stories from the Bible and then like making that yeah into kids' books? Yeah, and I. But then you know, of course, in the places where they tried to ban the Bible, people were like, "No, no, no, we didn't mean that book." You know, we mean these other books. But to me, it just feels like this is another attack on intellectualism. I feel like there's a major anti-intellectual movement in the country. That um, because they're always talking about how universities are indoctrinating people. No, they're not indoctrinating people. They're teaching people. A lot of students who uh, have not had their minds expanded have their minds expanded once they go to college and they start learning things. And you just don't like what they start thinking about. I think what it comes down is is a lot of people don't like it when people use critical thinking skills. I've heard a lot of people that their entire lives they grew up really really usually it's being really religious mm -hmm. and then it's it's uh like you know they disagree with all the queer stuff mm -hmm. and critical race theory mm -hmm. and then they go to college or maybe they have a personal experience or something mm -hmm. once they're not like um only in high school and with their parents all the time and stuff. Right. And all of a sudden their entire perception just changes. Yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is, um, the college gets blamed a lot for that. And I always think back to my own experience where I grew up in a very conservative household. And, and in fact, during college, I volunteered for, a uh, Republican, uh, state Senator campaign. And, uh, like I was, I remained very, uh, conservative even throughout college. It was after college that I started, um, to, uh, critically think more about things. And, and the thing that I find so funny is that the way that I came to become more liberal was through studying the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, and I get accused all the time of applying my liberal ideas to the Bible and ignoring what the Bible actually says. And I just find that so funny because it was like, nope, it, I actually started studying the Bible more deeply and started understanding the context and the history in which it was written. 
And that led me to having more radical ideas. It's kind of interesting as well because you you guys have always taught me from the beginning how to critically think. Yes. And everything like that. Yeah, and, you, and, and you, we've often regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you've also told me to like question and you've taught me like true history and stuff like that, not whitewashed history. Mm -hmm. So I remember there were multiple times when I was going to public school that I would get in trouble for stuff. And then... <laughs> <laughs> you get in trouble yeah i would get in trouble because i would disagree with the teachers i would tell them <laughs> that they're wrong that's my boy um i remember uh fourth grade when we first moved to blacksburg yes um when i told my teacher that they were wrong about something with history uh -huh. and i got in trouble and i think it was during the parent teachers conference it was dad and i that went in and they told my dad and and he was like yeah <laughs> It was like, he's right. Like, what do you mean? Like, why? Are you... Was it the thing? Because I remember you had you had something you brought home from school that was about history. And it basically compared slaves to indentured servants. And I think made so. it sound more like, oh, they were working off a debt. And it was really fine. It was a good arrangement. Like, it was just, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So. And... Yeah, I got in trouble in history class a lot. I bet you did. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was fun. Um, it actually kind of was in some moments. There was also because, you know, I have extreme anxiety that it was very nerve-wracking for me. But... Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, fourth grade was not a good time for you. No, no, it wasn't. That was pretty terrible. Yeah, I was. Well, that was the year they prepped you for all the... SOLs, which I find is the funny acronym. Standards of Learning, I think, is what it was called in, That's Vir ironic. in Virginia. Yeah. And the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, oh gosh, that was awful. Standardized tests suck. Okay. Anyway. And then they also, uh, that was the first school I went to that had like gifted program as well. And oh, so yeah. they started testing me for that too. Yeah. 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 Which now I've realized how bad gifted programs are. Oh my God, there's so many things we could talk about that, yeah. that are just assumed to be good and... I don't know how we thought we were going to be talking about book banning and go within 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I mean, we're, we really could go on. I mean, I have a, a whole list here of different books that were banned and that it's just... it's it's One of the top ones is Gender Queer, a Memoir. Can anyone guess why this book was banned? Right? It's... Ugh. Yeah, it's just hatred dressed up in protecting children. I think that's where I get irritated. It's three languages it, it, dressed it, up in a trench coat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's This is where I get irritated is that it's everything that is being done is quote unquote to quote protect the children. And it's, these are the same people that advocate guns. The right. Like, do you want to actually protect kids? All right. How about um, stricter gun laws? How about. Uh, more background checks. How about like um, not indoctrinating your kids into guns? Like these Christmas cards I see where like the whole family's holding guns. Like it's just. Or uh, obviously the banning drag shows because that has a very. Oh my God. That has a very strong effect on children where you can, you know, you could just like not take your children to them. Right. Right. It's not like it's forced. <laughs> I know it's just oh it's so dumb but but yeah it's what's fascinating to me is I compare this kind of thing to what happened after World War II which was um Operation Paperclip which sounds like a very boring operation. it's a really dull name for something so nefarious so the 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 United States government went wow there's all these like super genius engineers and doctors and stuff in the Nazi party, we should, um, bring them here. And they brought a bunch, a bunch of, um, Nazi scientists. And, 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 Einstein? Huh? Was Einstein one of them? No, Einstein wasn't a Nazi. No, not Nazi, just German. Oh, no, no. I'm talking specifically. Oh, specifically Nazis? Yeah. Oh, okay. And they kind of like gave them absolution. Like you can come here and, and we won't, you know, worry about all those terrible crimes you committed. And, um, and gave them jobs in like high government positions and like NASA and stuff like that. And that's just astounding to me. Cause they're basically like, Oh, we want to put their intellect 
to work for good. But I'm like, okay, but you're bringing Nazi ideology over here. Do you think they're just going to stop being Nazis? Yeah. And, and so when all this crap started happening again, when, you know, like when the, the March in Charlottesville and, you know, all this stuff and, and like we're seeing literal Nazis growing again in America. I'm like, are we surprised? Like we literally brought them over and we're like, here, you're welcome here. And also here's a bunch of money. Like are, are, do, are we surprised that Nazi ideas have been passed down and it reminds been me of, sitting there waiting to, this is probably a whole nother episode topic, but have you heard of the third wave? I mean, I've heard of different things called third waves. Well, the third wave was an experiment from a high school teacher where he said that, um, <clears throat> like, I'm going to do an experiment where if all of you, um, like, conform to my, basically, a cult that he was going to, quote, unquote, create, mm-hmm. um, that, like, they would all get A's. Mm. Uh, and if anyone doesn't follow it, then they'll automatically fail the class. But if they overthrow him, then they all get A's for the class. Oh, that's interesting. What happened is over the course of the year, he managed to turn like the whole school into the cult. Oh, my God. He had like students acting as bodyguards for him. He had like and he he even did stuff where it was supposed to be like uh, Nazi Germany type thing where anytime they passed someone that they knew was uh, part of the third wave, then they would do a hand gesture to each other. Oh, geez. And if anyone passed someone that was part of it and they didn't do the hand gesture, they were supposed to report it Oh, my to gosh. It. He really was being Nazi Germany-ish. Yeah. And it, like, it, it was a whole experiment that was supposed to talk about, it was supposed to teach about Nazi Germany. And he was not expecting the level of, like, Comp, like complicatedness of it like it just blew up all of a sudden it was wow yeah because students were starting to do this outside of school oh my gosh. and other schools started to do it was like yeah it's a topic for a whole nother thing but yeah. it's like as Dang. soon as you bring even a drop of something like that into somewhere it mm-hmm. can spread like wildfire you know, before we wrap up, because we probably should, one of the things that interests me is, you know, Mein Kampf uh, is the book that Hitler wrote, right? I didn't know that, but. Yes. Um, now, it's also been banned. And I in, certainly hope so. Right. <laughs> and, and that's the difficult thing with banned books, right? Like, there is, like, a point at which do you go, well, at what point do you go, that's a bad idea we need to ban, but that's, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, um I, that's that's I, I almost wish we had more time because to to get into that would be um very interesting i think and it was banned in germany for a long time which that makes perfect sense like they germany after world war ii they were like no nazis yeah, yeah. germany was like <laughs> probably one of the best countries to be like oh we messed up we're yeah. gonna do a whole like reform of our yeah. entire system as opposed to us who after slavery we erected statues of slave owners, owners. And, yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah germany was a good example for how to fix fix that right um but the thing that i find really interesting about mein kampf is he hitler wrote it while he was in prison for attempting to overthrow a government <laughs> and and I'm like, okay, so this book became super popular and like he was literally in jail for doing like, did you, did you follow him? Cause you thought he was going to do it again and you liked that? Or did you just think, oh, he's learned his lesson. You know what I mean? Cause it sold like millions of copies and, you know, and it basically was he, Mein Kampf means my, my struggle in German and he wrote all his ideas and then also about how like Jewish people were to blame for everything. And so all these people, oh, yeah. Yeah. So all these people were like, yay, I like this idea. And you know, um, but I can't help but think Man, he was uh, artistic with his hate too. Yeah. Right. I can't help but think though <laughs> of, uh, another person who 
attempted to overthrow the government and maybe shouldn't be given a platform. Mm. But anyway. Um, <laughs> but that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely say that our instead of our episode being 30 to 45 minutes, they're going to be 45 minutes to an hour. Because... Oh, well, the first two were like 37, 38 minutes. So somewhere between th- uh, a half hour and an hour. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> We either tackle too small of subjects or too big of subjects. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, we can just talk for a long time. And, and yeah. That's we'll, how Midwestern we are. Yeah. We'll learn to tighten it up, folks. <laughs> yes. Eventually. Probably not. Probably. That's probably We, we are Ohioans, after all. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> time to go. Time to go.